I think it's thirty percent of people, uh, newly promoted leaders, will fail or 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 lose their job within the first, I think, year and a half. Wait a minute. So you're trying to yeah. figure me out, but you're gonna act like you're I, not. <laughs> yeah. You're teaching character, discipline, you know, hard work, you know, blue collar values, and they really speak to me. Hello, and thanks for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today, or or maybe you're watching on YouTube. So if you're a regular listener of the podcast, I uh, just want to remind you that if you're listening to this, it's also available at this time on Blue Collar Leadership on the YouTube channel. And that's uh, youtube.com forward slash at Blue Collar Leadership, and you can go watch it. If, if you want to see how, how good looking uh, my guest is today, all you got to do is... <laughs> <laughs> go get on the video. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to Mr. Matthew McGrath. It's a pleasure to have you on today, Matthew. Thank you, Max Story. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. It's really exciting to join you on your podcast. I've, I've listened to and watched your podcast several times, and it's kind of surreal to be here with you. So it's very exciting. It's cool, man. I'm glad to introduce you, though, to the audience, and, and thank you. And uh, t uh, if you don't mind, if you'll just share, you know, how, to, how do we how do we even come to know each other? Because you don't live anywhere close to me. So you share where you where you live, where you're coming from. And, and how did how do we even come to know each other? All righty. So I'm I'm actually in Zagreb, Croatia right now. And I've lived in Croatia for the better part of 20 years. I, wow. I had a four, four year stint in Berlin, Germany. Um, but uh, 16 years in Croatia. So I left the United States in 2004. Okay. And you and I met somewhat recently on LinkedIn. So that's the power of uh, technology these days. And everybody even across the, the world on the other side of the world is like a next door neighbor when you're yeah. on LinkedIn. And, and I had been liking some of your posts and then you sent me a message. I think I got it around midnight or one, but I have a small... Uh, child so I was awake and there was a really nice and warm greeting you sent me with some links to some free chapters to of your book and some resources and talking about how you support your network and oh, yeah. then I, I just I, I clicked on one of those links the next day and I put on one of your podcasts there and you you were going through one of the chapters in your books and then you said something that really spoke to me very deeply. And you said something uh, like this. It was, um, who, I want you to know, whoever you are out there, that I, I love you unconditionally. And I want you to have a better life. And that I'm doing this because that's what I'm about. And that's what I want. And you had mentioned that you, you read every day for half an hour and that you really don't like reading and that you do that. <laughs> every day for i don't know 12 or 15 years however many years it's been so that you can help people better yeah and that just really resonated with me because there's so many people out there there's so many voices and so many um you know the leadership development field or any kind of business consulting and thought leaders there's millions yeah and i just i i heard some the words that I feel in my heart come out of your mouth. When you said that, I said that that's my guy. That's because that's how I feel, you know, and and I, I've even used that word love to speak about how I work with people and how I get so excited to to see their progress. Yeah. And um, it's there's no better word than that. And in the business setting, sometimes the word love is a bit out of place and it's not what people are using that often, but I have used it to describe how I feel about the people that I yep. work with. And then when, you, when I heard you using that word, it really resonated with me. And then I remember the next day I wrote back to you and said, you know, that I listened to your podcast and I've al it's been already, you've already been a blessing to me and, and really inspired me. And then I spent some time listening to other podcasts of yours and just, you know, I, I love this like no nonsense approach. So I'm a guy who we all need, good influences in our lives, some coaches and mentors. And, and I really kind of like this tough love approach. So a little bit of kind of no nonsense approach and someone to tell me, you know, how it is and, and how you're, you're kind of teaching, uh, you're teaching character, 
discipline, you know, hard work, um, these very, um, you know, blue collar values. And they really speak to me. And that's the kind of influence that I need in my life. And since, you know, then why I'm on the call now is because I was following your posts and liking, and then in one of the comment section in somebody else's post, then you wrote your phone number there and said, Hey, you know, reach out to me if you ever want to do a call. And I jumped on that opportunity right away. And I, I wanted to get in touch and talk to you about leadership. And then we had a couple calls and you really, you know, inspired me as a role model and as a mentor. And, and I think it made a big difference in my trajectory because it's been tough over here. You know, I'm kind of, I mean, I have a lot of contacts and friends and things, but I, I, I and I have role models, um, you know, from the books and, and videos and podcasts and things, but it just meant a lot to me to have, um, you know, a mentor in the leadership development field who is really talking about the kind of things that I care about and that I could look up to. And, and, you know, you, you got the, the books and the, and the podcasts and all those things that are kind of the, the hard work you've put in to creating, um, all these different media and different ways of influencing people and making an impact. And then I really look up to that and want to do something similar. And so it's been really, um, yeah, just a massive opportunity. And, and it's been a great joy for me to have that positive influence from you. And I think one more thing I'll say before you can ask another question um, is that Dump the truck you on said, us, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, I got another one because you, I think you, there's a recently someone was posting about beliefs and the beliefs we have in ourselves. And I think you have a similar story about this how somebody believed in you yep. and that made you believe in yourself. And I think when we're, you know, when we have a big vision and big goals, then it's easy to get discouraged or it's easy to talk ourselves out of them. And somebody wrote recently in one of the comment sections about belief, they said, and if you don't have enough belief in yourself, then you can just borrow it from somebody else who believes in you. Yeah. And I think you really became that person for me, for me right away, because you said, you know, you got to, whatever you, your goal is, you got to build that thing. It's going to help a lot of people. You can do it. And having that kind of belief and conviction with which you express that belief really made an impact on me and, and really kind of turbocharged me. And, I like um, it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's fun. <laughs> it it is fun, and that's some good stuff you said. And I forget who somebody. It may even been my mom at some point, but I, it's been a little while. Somebody used used to call me uh, Mister Sparky. They said that's what I did. I was a I was a spark in other people's lives, you know, to get that fire yeah. going and fan the flame. But you know, I want to mention <clears throat> some a couple things you said a minute ago. You're talking about l love. You know, it's not a it's not a word that a lot of people do talk about, especially in the in the blue collar world. Uh, us blue collar folks got some hard shells, to, you know, to crack. We got the armor on, got to be tough and all that stuff. And when I'm talking to the blue collar groups, when I'm talking, well, sometimes I'll say something about love and I say, I know y'all don't want to hear about it. It's all soft, warm and fuzzy and all that kind of stuff. But I said one way to understand it is to take it to the extreme. If you could walk through the door every day and work with a boss who loves you or you can work with a boss who hates you. I bet you choose love every time. Right. That's Cause that's right. Mm -hmm. everybody understands when you make it black and white and clear like that. And so, mm -hmm. so that that's really cool. And one, one thing before I t take your conversation a little further, I want to mention for everybody watching, because what you're wanting to do is the same thing I'm doing. You just want to do it in your way, right? In your way, in yep. your space with your audience. So I just want to mm -hmm. take a little teaching moment to share with people. And we just, <clears throat> We just met recently, right? We we talked several yep. hours by video, though, and mm -hmm. I was attracted mm -hmm. to who you are and your mission right off the bat. We we do have a lot of shared values and and want to help a lot of the same people, mm -hmm. no matter where they're at in the world. And so mm -hmm. the, the point I want to make to people is there's no competition. I, I'm here to shine my light yep. on you. I want you to succeed. You're not competition yep. for me. I, I ain't mm -hmm. ever had anybody call me and say, Mac, we got too many leaders. Can you help get rid of a few of them? There ain't nobody ever calling <laughs> saying that. So, and, and our world needs all the help it can get. So I just want to share with them and then we can take this wherever you want it, want it to go. But at some point in the, in that conversation, when we first got on the video to talk, 
you you just you just th- threw out threw it out there that you had come up with that idea about just promoted dot com and you had bought the domain and i i mean i didn't as soon as you got that out of your mouth i was like you got to make that happen <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they yeah, lot of even, yeah. Uh, and you and you do, you have started making it happen so tell us yep t- tell us about that we'll we get to your story too but that's part of your story yeah, right? yeah. Mean, that's good stuff yeah right so there. yeah so it's just an idea right now but it's a pretty serious idea and it's a pretty well-defined vision but what happened to me is i was taking um a training course about how to make membership um, sites or, or memberships uh, by a guy named Stu McLaren. Um, it's a, uh, what's he call it? Membership experience. And I was actually doing that to kind of get my wife. So my, my wife's been a stay at home mother um, for the last nine years. Yep. And I know that she's itching to do something and to make a, an impact and to, you know, start a side business or, or something like that. And so that actually, I was trying to get her into that um, because a lot of, you know, it's like a part-time job. You can make a membership and this, this kind of stuff. And then the, the, this guy, Stu, the, the, the teacher or the trainer or the proprietor of the membership experience, he asked if you're a coach or consultant. So he was talking about how people get ideas for memberships. And they said, if you're a coach or consultant, what do people ask you about the most? And then who comes to you for help the most? And then the answer came right, right away. It was the, you know, just got promoted leaders or the first time leaders. And I didn't really, and then, uh, then that night I went, so there's another guy by the name of Tom Woods, who's a, uh, who has a couple memberships and things. And he's very, very good copywriter. And he has probably a 500 different web domains every time he makes a special offer he makes a different domain so oh, yeah. i got this idea of the like, like like the creative domains if you use several words then you'd be surprised what domains are out there yeah and then i just went right away that night to check if this was available because this idea came to me just got promoted.com for people who just got promoted and sure enough the domain was available and i bought it right away but i didn't do anything with it because i wasn't really sure that i wanted to so i um in my day job, I'm working in a large corporation and, and developing leaders there. And I, I do enjoy that, but for whatever reason, it didn't feel like it was, you know, I'd, if I'm going to start a business or, or start some kind of large project or community, then it had to be something where you're all in um, and something that is or otherwise it feels like work or you just create a job for yourself, you know? (laughs) And so then I had to chew on it for a while, but then as, as things progressed, then I started to realize, well, it's not just about if I want to do it or not, but it's, you know, some of those talking myself out of doing it might be some of these fears and doubts. And, you know, um, as I called it in this recent newsletter that I wrote, playing a small game, talking yourself out of playing a bigger game, put yourself out there. And, yeah. You know, and so then it, I just and my wife kept saying this and I think it was true. And other people, if I mentioned the idea to them, everyone said, oh, you got to build that thing because it just is a really good. Even now, people say oh, it's a really good domain name is I love it. You, you got to build that. And then it started to feel more like a responsibility, some kind of inspiration that's not of your own making and then it's like a calling as they call it right and then it's like well there's people out there and you said this you said and this something is just really you know i'm thinking about every day you said you know matthew if you if you don't build that you got to build that because there's people out there that are waiting for you to show up yeah absolutely and there's new some new newly promoted managers or whoever they are out there, there's people out there, they're waiting for you to show up. And if you don't build this, then they're not going to get the help they need. Yeah. And that really, you know, made me centered me and said, okay, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's me or who it is or how it is, or if I know what I'm doing or how to do it, but I really took your words to heart. And I think that's true for all, all human beings. We all have, you know, and that it can change at different times, but we all have callings and we all have purpose and we all get inspiration, you know, like they say, the phone rings and are you going to answer it or not? Yeah. And I think, you know, different phones ring at different times and lots of those phones I probably didn't answer. 
for whatever reasons over the years. And so then, you know, even if you miss a few of those calls, they'll still come again. So that, that some, some way in which you can grow and serve and, and impact, um, it will show up and then you still get another opportunity. And I, I feel like this is one of those calls that I got to, you know, figure out how to build this thing. So we're right at the very beginning, but I can feel once you get started and get moving, then things start happening. And so, you know, connecting with you, but then I've probably connected with 10, 20, 30 other people just, you know, in the DMs and things. They say, hey, I really like what you're doing. You know, I, if I can help out, let me know. And then I just think, wow, when we get to the Just Got Promoted podcast and the guest speakers, and I'm going to have, there's a lot of people who want to um, step in and, 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 and help the newly promoted leaders because a lot of them also didn't get a lot of help and support. Yeah. And I think that's really um, that's really the focus or like actually a guy asked me today, he said, so what's your niche? I said, my niche is the people who don't have any help and any support. <laughs> so then we, we talked promoted. about maybe this. <laughs> it just got promoted. Yeah. No mentors, no good role models and no coaching and no um, leadership development within their company. So these kind of smaller companies and startups, that's the norm. Yep. Right. So in a lot of the big corporations, um, you have leadership, let's say leadership tree where people are developing other leaders and succession planning and, you know, high potential programs for future leaders and all those. So there are a lot of companies in the world do have all those resources and things, but a lot of companies have not much of anything. And I know you're, you're doing the same thing where you're operating in a lot of a lot of places where. No, nothing had ever been spent in any leadership development capacity until yep. you walked in the door. Right. So you're working also in a similar, uh, let's say different population, but similar um, deficit for resources and, and leadership development. So I think we, we have that in common. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and really for me, you know, I, we hit it from both, both ends because the folks you're talking to, they're my audience too. You know, the, the, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, my potential client or whatever you want to call it, but, but the people who, th that's what kind of makes it hard for me when I'm speaking and sharing stuff. Cause sometimes I'm talking to the leader who needs to be motivated and inspired to, to develop their people cause they never have. And I, we got content for those folks, but then sometimes mm -hmm. I'm talking to the entry level worker or the entry level supervisor or manager that's, that's just been promoted and everybody in between, but their company's not doing anything. So I, we kind of mm -hmm. hit hit both, but I think yep. you really owned to something with, but, but, but even, even, even your just got promoted.com brand, that's going to still be awesome because I mean, at some point someone's going to have just been promoted to CEO. So you may expand yeah. into the same, you know, it may quickly go to not just the very brand new leader, but the person who just been promoted. Every time you go to a new level, you, you got to have, you got to develop another level of understanding to lead, more people so probably going to end up we're going to be both kind of doing the same thing but different differently but the yep, yep, principle yep. wise it's going to be the same exact thing and 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 our world does need all the, all the help it can get and, and i just share with the audience that day when you said well like you know you just casually talk you're like well i got this idea you know just don't matter <laughs> just, just just promoted.com and and you know and i said you got to do that but what was awesome to me was you trusted me enough, not even knowing me to share that with me. Cause when I was thinking, when, as soon as you said it, first thing I thought, actually two things at the same time, one thing was you got to make that happen. The other thing was, yeah. I can't believe he just sh shared that. Like I'm thinking you got to make this happen before everybody, somebody else hears it and steals it or whatever. You got to, however much you can protect it. You, you got to go get the podcast name, the YouTube channel. You got to get every, you got to go get it all before somebody else gets it. And, yep, and you've been yep. on a mission since then. You've been yep, trying to yep. get as much as you can and get all that squared away, right? Because as soon as you put it out there, yep. I mean, so, we we own so many domains that we're probably never going to use, but they related to our domain. And so we had to right. go pay and keep subscribe, keep these things, you know, keep keep paying up for domains we're really not even using. But so somebody else can't right. steal it and got to steal our brand. Because yep, like you said, yep, it's, yep. it's a lot of work it's a lot of work to build a brand. It don't happen mm. overnight. And it mm. might happen for you because yours mm. is so good. <laughs> but for most of well, my, us, we got to yeah, do a lot of work. For me, because I have, I have get, get, and with today we got guest speaker, Mr. Max Story, and my brand's going to 
<laughs> explode on day one. <laughs> but I will be on your podcast if you ever want me or Rio, either I one. Know it. Both. I know it. And happy to add value I, I to would, you. I was, th- I was thinking of you as the first guest, but I hope you won't mind. I want to get my dad as the first guest because now I, I was talking with him and I said, man, Dad, you are good, man. So, <laughs> yeah, you but I, absolutely I, I go with Dad. I, I told him yesterday, get a pair, pair of headphones like this, and I signed up for a stream, a stream yard, and uh, uh, I'm ready to go. So I said, "Hey, Dad, we're gonna start as soon as possible. Go get your headphones." That's outstanding, so, you and know. And you probably could do. I'm gonna let you share just one second about your dad and why you want him to be the first one, but. I already know it just a tiny bit about your dad, but you, you, go, mm-hmm. you can do series with him. You know, when you, yep. you come across somebody like, I mean, you know, he'll help you, but I'll help you too. Mm-hmm. But I ain't, I ain't yep. inviting myself to be on any more than you want me. But a lot of people <laughs> who have me on, I, I tell them I'll, I'll do series with people because I just want to help people. Yeah. I don't care if it's free or yep. it's paid or what it yep. don't make any yep. difference. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you're going to meet people like that, that you could do series on like your dad, yep. you could have a, multi-part series and then he could come on every so often talk you tell him about mm-hmm. dad tell him my dad yeah so a little bit about so, what you're gonna be talking about yeah so my dad we we talk often about leadership and he's on linkedin there and he leads some of the things he reads some of the things that i'm posting and he's got 42 years of uh people leadership experience yeah so he he's probably, a, he, he's probably West- he probably got a little something to bring to the table I, he's got a lot, yeah. So he he's a he went to West Point back in the seventies, graduated in class of seventy four, and then he was in the military. I think for twenty three years, but I'm not exactly sure how many. Okay. So then he was a uh, you know. So then he can talk about being a second lieutenant, and again that first experience as an officer, and yeah. and then even how they how they produce leaders at West Point. That's oh, yeah. when people when people argue about if leaders are born or made. Then I say, hey. Go talk to anybody who went to West Point. They didn't walk in their leaders, right? So that's that's the factory, you know, the yeah, military yeah. general. I know you spent some time in the Marine Corps. So they're they're turning normal people into leaders every day, right? So they're the yeah. they're the kind of gold standard for for the you know, let's say the or the the real evidence that leaders can be made. Um yeah. And then, uh, so then he, he uh, had a, had a career in the military as an officer and, and was retired as a Lieutenant Colonel. And then he got to move to the corporate world and he had some, you know, very, um, some very senior executive positions there reporting to the CEO yeah, uh, and, and some large corporations and What's um, his name? He's able to that uh, Don McGrath, Don J McGrath. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mr. Yeah, Don, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> he's my he's my treasure trove because every time we talk, he's got good things to say about leadership. And then once he gets started, then he's remembering all those stories. So he's not a he's not a leadership development expert and speaker. So the stories aren't as you know available to him as they are to you. He hasn't practiced them <laughs> as many times. But then once he gets going, then one story leads to another. And then I said, "Man, I I wish we were recording this, Dad." So we got to we got to jump on that. So yeah, that's that's gonna be awesome. So I one time when I was going through some John Maxwell training, I learned they were talking about they were studying John. It was like a ninety minute lesson. They were some some of my previous mentors were studying John and breaking down a speech he was giving and. Mm-hmm helping you learn how he speaks. And mm. the, the biggest nugget I took away from all that was they, they just said there's there's two kind of speakers. And mm-hmm. you just described one of them, and, and I feel like I'm one of them. Rhea's kind of both of them, <laughs> but I, I won't ever be both of them. But there's there's mm. expert speakers. You know, they can remember like a, a keynote speech. They, they can give it the same mm. keynote speech a 100 times over, and it'll be the same experience for every audience. That ain't me. Mm. <laughs> that ain't no. never going to be me. But mm. but then there's people like they describe what John is. Jo- John is an expert who speaks. There's expert speakers and they're experts who speak. And that's that's who I want to be, an expert who speaks. And, and relative yes. to leadership development, expert means doesn't mean you know everything. It means you're a lifetime student of leadership and personal development. That's to me, that's what a leadership exactly. expert is. It means they're a lifetime student. Anybody who thinks yep. they know it all, they're not a leadership expert. <laughs> And no so way. What you just described, though, was, was your dad is an expert who speaks, no matter whether yep. he's done it a lot of times or he's doing it, you know, recalling a memory for the first time when you and him are being mm-hmm. interviewed. But th- that's 
you know, that's that's what I want to be is that kind of I can't remember nothing on purpose. Plus, I speak authentically. I may talk to somebody. I want to change what I'm saying, just like these interviews. They're never scripted. I don't mm. I, I really hate when people interview me and they want to do a script because it just messes me all up. I don't want to do a script. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go yeah, whatever's yeah. going on. But but what's cool and I know you've had to have thought of this, but when you do these series with your dad, they get, first of all, they, they should be just awesome. They go, they're going, that's yep. going to be awesome. And I know he's got to be proud of you for wanting to do these. I mean, to do what you're about to do. And so, uh, yep. but you're going to get to memorialize a lot of conversations with him between you and mm -hmm. him, you know, for your family mm -hmm. and for mm -hmm. your daughter and, and whoever else comes, you know, I don't yep. know how big a family you got, but that's, just for you and your family, that that ought to just be awesome. I mean, that that'd be it. Got to be wicked. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a he's got a lot. Yeah, he he, he also worked very closely with some generals, including the two two guys who were the chief of staff of the army. So he was a uh, he was the uh, the spokesperson, the spokesman for them. So this yeah. is also very interesting. He's worked cl very closely with a lot of generals and things, and then just to talk about. I think, yeah, how the vet, this value ba values based leadership, and yep. how much you know some of those guys, the top brass, they have you know egos and everything, but how how much they care about others and how yeah. good listeners they are, and you know just a lot of special experiences that he's able to relate about working with some of these really exceptional leaders. So, so yep. yeah, we'll we'll be a series. We'll we'll have to have a recurring maybe monthly check that's gonna be awesome. with dad yeah leadership with yeah, dad <laughs> hey that's cool right there i mean you're gonna have yeah you're gonna have so many ideas that's what's fun about this but that's that's yeah that's yeah. gonna be cool you know something else he can tell you about in a unique way which we kind of touched on but that before you started talking about you mr don was uh you know as him going into the military as as, as second lieutenant and then coming out as a lieutenant colonel when i was talking mm -hmm. about your your brand just got promoted I mean, he just got promoted a bunch of times and he can talk yep. to that. You know how yep, yep. You, you start at the first position. Now you get promoted again and everything you learned before is a foundation, but it, it ain't enough to get you to the next level. You got to grow, develop some more. And so he can talk about it literally, you know, from a military promotion standpoint through some pretty yep, good yep. levels there. Yeah. And another guest I'll have is my brother. So he was in the Marine Corps like yourself. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. your family lives back in the U.S. still. Your dad's in where's yep, he at? Yep. State? My dad's down in uh, Santa Fe, and New Mexico. my mom. Yep, yep, down in New Mexico, and my mom is in Pittsburgh, and that's okay. where I spent most of my childhood. And my brother okay. is um, in Columbus, and my sister's in Columbus. Which which yeah, state? So my Columbus? My, Columbus, Ohio. Oh yeah, you got your Columbus, Georgia down there. That's yeah, there's right. a lot of Columbus. Uh, probably every state has a Columbus, right? Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> yep. For you, okay. yeah. yeah Columbus, that's cool. Columbus, Georgia. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we we went out to Santa Fe. I I got to speak at the International Mountain Biking Association World Summit out there in Santa Fe back in 2012 or 13 because I, wow. I was a founding member of a, a a mountain bike chapter in our community. I started it as president. And Rhea started as a uh, uh, secretary and we we did a you know as volunteer nonprofit organization, but anyway, we got such crazy Amazing. results. They invited us to go out there and, and speak about what we accomplished. It was, really was ridiculous. But that ain't why we're here. But but I just remember <laughs> New Mexico because because I went mountain biking out there while we were there. And first, I mean, we were mountain biking at ten thousand feet elevation, and I, I went up a little hill, man. I I I, I thought I'd go. I was trying to take off my clothes. I couldn't breathe. There wasn't no oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah it was rough but pretty it's a that's, pretty state that's real mount, mountain biking that's the real mountain biking right there you got to actually go up the mountain <laughs> yeah and santa fe is where we were at we uh we were mm -hmm. at some hotel and conference center there in santa fe that's where where we got to speak so we got to hang out that's a neat that's a neat city so he's living in a cool yeah, place he, he loves it down he goes ski, uh, skiing a lot so he lives about I don't know, 20 minutes from the ski area. So then he's going skiing several times a week. So it's, he stays busy down there. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. You want to shift gears and talk about any of your journey, any of your personal story or your professional story or mix? Oh, all sure. So, How far back you want yeah, to go? So, yeah. So I don't know. So my, yeah, my, so I got this military thing going on in the family. 
Yeah. And then I was kind of the, the yeah, we were moving around a lot. And then my, my parents got divorced when I was nine. So then we were living in Pittsburgh. So then we became Pittsburghers. So I was, uh, we were in um, Fort Knox, Kentucky, and then we were in Germany. So actually my first memories are of Germany from, from the age of three to six. Okay. Which is a prop possibly playing a, a role in why I live in Europe now. So my very first memories were fr- uh, from Germany and I actually went to German kindergarten as a child and learned how to speak German. Okay. And then, yeah. And then, so my parents split, but it was interesting. My dad actually got stationed in Pittsburgh for a year and he's, he, he worked at as a, in a civilian role in a public relations firm. And he also saw some very good leaders there as well, as a matter of fact. And then he was, went to the Pentagon after that. And then, uh, yeah, so I w- was there in Pittsburgh, went to Catholic school, uh, all boys Catholic high school, and then graduated and went to McAllister College in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, um, and then got a bachelor's degree in psychology. And then I graduated and didn't know really what to do with my life. So I went to New York City and went to acting school for a year and lived um, with my aunt there in the Greenwich Village. And that was quite an experience. Wait a minute, I gotta ask something. So you got a, a degree yeah. in psychology, yes, and then you went to acting school. And then I went to but, acting school. So you trying I, to figure I, me I, out? Wait a minute, so I, you gonna I, act like you're I, not? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely. I mean, I I wasn't there for long, but I did learn a lot. So I, I mean, there is a there is something to that. I my whole life, people had told me I w- I should be an actor. So I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> but that was, uh, you know, I was just very, yeah, for whatever reason, I was kind of that. I'm, a, I don't know if it's because I'm a middle child, but it's something they say about middle children that's kind of um, entertaining and, uh, you know, the struggle for attention. And I was that kind of kid, so I was yeah. cracking jokes in the school and very loud and boisterous and very extroverted. And then in college, I just wandered into the theater um, and auditioned and then got a part in one of the plays and then the the director said wow you were really good and you know you should consider doing this as a as a as a career and then you know i what i learned is and i think in the arts it's generally that way that if you don't you have to just like a you know ballet dancer or a classical pianist or whatever it is if you're an artist then you just live for that oh yeah and you need to you know wake up and you're all about that until you go to bed yeah, and so I think I didn't really have that piece the same way some of the other people did, and it's so competitive there in New York City. So if you're, you can't fake it, you know. If you're not about that, then you know. So then I, I was just kind of not knowing what to do with my life, and then that's you know what I was doing while I was going to think about it was then going to be doing the acting school and maybe be an actor, and um, and then as I was there, I was thinking. I, I found a job then teaching English in Croatia. Okay. And that was just kind of a random idea. So I, I just went to look uh, where I could. So I, I'd actually, this one thing that I think is very important in my, let's say, development of who I am and my, my life path is that I went to um, language immersion summer camp as a child. Um, my, my two aunts sent me to summer camp in Minnesota, Bemidji, Minnesota, um, to German immersion camp. So that's where I relearned German. Okay. And then this is an institution where they teach lang. You can learn like a year's worth of language or more in two weeks. Wow. And how many languages so do you speak, Matthew? Well, it depends how you define speak, but I, I can get around in probably five or six of them. So, but I, wow. I do speak I'm, Croatian very well. That's impressive. I'm still trying to figure out English. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, my English has gotten worse over the 20 years I've lived over here. But I, I speak, um, my wife speaks even more languages. So, wow. but I, yeah, for me, when I say I speak a language, it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily fluent, but I, I can converse in a few languages. But I'm, I'm quite, yeah, I'm quite good at Croatian and I'm pretty good at German. And, okay. and um, so then I, I went to this language camp uh, and worked there for a few years. And then, you know, I, I got good at teaching German. So I was pretty confident that I could do a good job teaching English as well. And then when I went to apply for jobs, they were all in, um, or I, I found a, a, a site that had different teaching English opportunities. 
And then they were all um, in China and some kind of more exotic places. And I didn't think I was going to go over there. Yeah. Um, but then one, there was one that said teach in beautiful Croatia. And incidentally, I'd had a friend, a uh, close, very close friend of mine who was a, a friend from this language camp. And also in college, he was, he was at the same college and he had traveled the world. He, he was a very good student and he got a, a, a scholarship or a, a fellowship to travel around the world and study um, hip hop music. Okay. So he traveled to, <laughs> Mongolia and to uh, Senegal and France, all over the world. And, and one of the places he went was in Croatia. And one of the stipulations was that he had to be out of the United States for the whole year. Okay. And so he had, you know, documentary footage of uh, Mongolian break dancers and, and all the, <laughs> and like Croatian freestyle battle and all these different things he had seen. And when he came back, then I, I asked him what was the best place. And he said, Croatia was the best place. And then the way he described it was, he said, if you, if you like greasy meat and beautiful women, Croatia is the best country in the world. <laughs> Probably a little bit well, like a lot of men over lot there. Similar. <laughs> yeah. So then, so then he, uh, then just, I saw that ad maybe a few months after that. So it wasn't the reason I applied, but you know, it kind of rang a bell. I said, Oh, Croatia. Yeah. And then the guy who had had the job there in this small town called Križevci, the guy who had had the job before me, was living in New York City at the time. And so then he met me and he told the boss of the school that I was good to go. And that's how I got the job. They had, had actually a lot of applications. So just coincidentally, this guy, he, he was originally from South Carolina, but he happened to be living in New York City. And then we met and then he, um, he gave me, you know, he interviewed me essentially and, and, and told the boss of the school. And then I went over there just for six months. And then, uh, I said, okay, I could stay on for another six months. And then the boss of the school said, well, if you're going to stay for six more months, then you got to stay for the whole year. And so then eventually I had a year and a half in and I was, I don't know, 25 years old or whatever. And I didn't know where else to go. So then I just stayed here. And then I, what, so the, how the leadership thing got started is as a 24 year old, then I moved to uh, Zagreb. That's the capital city here. Yeah, and I is worked for a coast, language. By the way, school. I haven't looked. Is that unfortunately no, no. It's, okay. a, it's I'm just the northern curious. part. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that coast, yeah, the coast is really something special. But we don't live on the coast, but we're considering moving down there. But um, probably the, not that this, far though. It ain't. I mean, the country. No, it's not. It's, so, no, it's not. It's the size of West Virginia. Actually. Yeah, so you can so get there. Not like, that big. You can get there three, four hours, two hours maybe to get to the closest part. So then I, in this uh, language school in Zagreb, then they, they worked in all the big companies here. And then they started sending me to teach executives. And so that's, then I was spending, you know, several hours with these highly placed C-level managers and very good, very successful leaders who yeah. had 20, you know, 20 years of experience. And then being that I had this background in psychology, then I was, you know, studying them and not just teaching them English, but there were other things that we were working on. And then um, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll plug a book that, that helped me on my path there. Okay. But it's um, the, um, so then one of these students, he, a guy named Tibor Jaeger, Ye Ye who was a Swedish guy that was living in Croatia. And he had had some military experience in Sweden. He was a very, good strategic leader and he'd been um he was running sales um and business development in different uh swedish companies that were active in the balkan area for yep. i don't know 10 20 years and then i was yeah he said to me in one of the meetings he said you sh you know what you should be i said what he said oh, i can't remember the name i can't remember what it's called hold on executive coach that's what he said so that was about 2004 or 5 2005 so i was 24 okay. years old and this guy told me i should be an executive coach i didn't know what that was and so then i started trying to figure out what was an executive coach you know and back we still had dial up internet in croatia so <laughs> i got on my dial up internet and started reading what is that executive coach? Oh, that sounds pretty good maybe i could be that and then actually so it was maybe a year or two later, I, I found this book, The Psychology oh, okay. of Executive Co Coaching by, by Bruce Peltier. 
Okay. And I've actually reached out to him there on uh, uh, LinkedIn and, and told him how his book made such a difference in my life because I've read this book three or four times and it's basically a, an instruction manual for psychotherapists and people with a background in psychology to move to executive coaching. Okay. And That's so awesome, then man. as, yeah. So as I was then teaching these executives English, then I was reading this book and trying to figure out, you know, what exercises and what things I could bring to them and what issues they were having and, and trying to basically, it was basically like a self, um, uh, um, a self led, uh, internship. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. just because I had access to all these leaders and I was studying this at that time, then I was able to really learn that way. So, wow, well, that's awesome. Maybe he'd be on your podcast too. Absolutely. So I, I've already got his agreement, so he'll, he'll be on for sure. That'll be a neat, he's, he's that'll be a neat story. That'd be really neat. Yeah. That'd, that'd kind of be like if I, if I would have ever had the chance to have Dr. Covey author of the seven habits on my podcast. I mean, he passed away, exactly, yep. you know, a long time ago, but, kind of be similar if i would have ever had that opportunity that would have just been awesome so you're gonna get that yep. opportunity yeah i'm gonna get that opportunity yeah and it was he was just really surprised because he's he's not you know he's there's not you know youtube videos and things of him he has his website and he has his resources there and this book you know is quite quite amazing so i think everybody who's interested in coaching or and actually interested in psychology so it covers all pretty much all of the schools of thought in psychology so for people who are who don't know so much about psychology, it's also you get kind of the whole, let's say, bachelor's degree in psychology just from reading one book. It's like an intro to psych. Text That's awesome. In a way. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I got my degree in, in uh, just I got just got the easiest degree I could get with a, biz, a business degree, but uh, I took all my electives in psychology because I always was just interested in that. And amazing. And that's how, what I always tell people is to me leadership is nothing more than the psychology of influence i mean that's what it is that's right i mean this that's what it is in essence, i don't know yep. if there really is such a thing as that but there should be <laughs> but but oh, if yeah, there's there not, is. what there it is, is is leadership development and personal growth and all that sort of stuff is is i don't mean do that do you know i don't i don't know i've, I've never heard of a like a, a degree in the psychology of influence or something but they, well, they there, should I be i was looking for another book to, to oh here 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 it is hold on one second okay <laughs> We'll, 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 we'll plug a few books because th this is actually uh, one of the, I'd say it's one of the top business books that m lots of people are familiar with. That's the psychology yep. of persuasion there. That's yep. uh, Bob Caldini. Yep. I've, so read, this I've, is the I've psychology. read that one. I'm actually reading his persuasion book now. Have you heard of that book? I've heard of the book. I haven't read it though. Yeah. So that's kind of influence. It's priming people to be influenced, right? Something yep. like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. So I'm not surprised you read it because it's one of the most famous ones. I know you read your half hour a day. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a half hour. I don't necessarily read a half hour. I just read every day. It probably you is a half hour, day. but that's, yeah. yeah, the goal yeah. is, I mean, my minimum goal is a paragraph a day. That's, you know, that, that could take a minute or two, but that's what yeah, I that's... recommend for, for especially people who don't like to read. Uh, I always tell them the blue collar folks, because a lot of them say, I don't like to read, you know, all this kind of stuff. I say, can you read? How long does it take you to read a, a paragraph a day? You know? And, yeah. I mean, one paragraph. How long does it take you? You know, people say a minute or two. And it ain't really that long if you read one of my paragraphs, because I keep them short. Yeah. The book's <laughs> short. The chapter's short. The words are short. The, the paragraphs are short. The sentences are short most of the time. Rhea says sometimes they're too long, but most of the time they're, they're, they're pretty short. But uh that's just a, because it's a goal people can keep. They can commit, keep that commitment of sometimes they're busy. They may not be able to read a chapter, especially if it's a long chapter. So then they end yeah. up not reading it. And then tomorrow they can't do it again. So eventually they just, they don't ever form that habit. But mm -hmm. if you read a paragraph a day, which ain't much. I always tell people you can read a whole book if you want to, but tomorrow you yep. still got to read that paragraph. That's and right. I read a book sometimes in a whole day, but I still got to read the paragraph tomorrow, but it don't take long. So that's, that, that's a, that's an awesome story, man. You, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that, a, that's, that's neat that's, that you're doing that and you got to interact with all those executives and then you got into that book and 
So continue on with your story. Yeah. Well, I, well, that is another thing we have in common because I also like to read a, a paragraph at a time sometimes, but it's because sometimes those thoughts are so deep that I just space out. I'm like, oh man, I, this is heavy. I can't take any more. <laughs> so I, I'll just read that paragraph because otherwise I'll forget it. Sometimes, that, you know, if you're reading the right books, you might find something that's so powerful as an idea that you just want to absorb that or even to go act on it. So sometimes, yeah, just reading actually a quote or, uh, you know, a couple bullet points. I mean, there's all kind. you know, reading every day, like you said, is great, but definitely sometimes less is more. So to read, yeah. just read something and go act on it. Yep. And then so, I yeah, post was, a lot. So I, I yeah. read a lot of my posts. I read a lot of other people's posts. And so I'm right. reading, yeah, I'm reading all the time more than most people, but, but all you got to do is a little bit. So go ahead. Yep. So yeah, that's, it's quite amazing what's happened on LinkedIn. I, I didn't realize it was such high quality stuff happening there every day. So there's, I learn a lot by reading those posts every day. So, yeah. So yeah, then with the story, so then I actually founded my own company, but I, I didn't, I didn't do it for, um, I didn't do it as for business reasons or impact or any, any other things. I just needed to get papers to stay in the country in Croatia. <laughs> Oh, okay. And so then having a company was the only path or, or getting married. So I chose to open a company instead of getting married. <laughs> and then you so got there married. There was no later. other way. Yeah, I got married <laughs> later, but to a Ukrainian wife. So yep. it didn't get me any papers for Croatia. So this is always ah. a constant issue, figuring out how to get the papers. So then at that time I opened this company, um, but it was just, it was not really to do business, you know? So then I, I spent my twenties having this company, but it was basically just owning my job. So I was able to work just uh, myself and my customers. And I, you know, I was still doing English teaching and then slowly pivoting into coaching and some soft skills training and these kind of things. But I, I think, you know, I was, I was very much enjoying the work and it was very good work. And I think yeah, when I speak to the people, these days, you know, some of them still show up on LinkedIn and things. So I, I did make a lot of impact on those people, but I never had the urge to find more of them or to market okay. myself or to put my, 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 and I don't know if that's probably related to just fear or insecurity or these different kind of um, self-limiting beliefs. So that's, um, oh, I want, I wanted to mention Marshall Goldsmith as well, because today's his birthday actually. And I made a post okay. about him. So, yeah. So he's my other, virtual coaching mentor because at, at that time when I was reading um, this book, I was reading every Marshall Goldsmith book and watching and listening to every podcast, every video. So that was a few years later when, when YouTube existed. But it, I think the first time I saw him was he gave the talks at Google and I must have watched it 50 times. So that was the other way that I learned. I didn't realize, you know, things like coaching certification. So I, I did end up taking the Marshall Goldsmith uh, training program and getting their okay. stakeholder centered um, certification later. But I didn't realize that was a, even a thing, you know? So yeah. then I was just list. I was like, well, I don't know how to become a coach, but I just am going to listen to this guy all the time. And so he's had a huge influence on me. And I, I actually posted on LinkedIn today, 10 things that I learned from him, but I could have made it 20. And I just, I didn't take quotes. I just wrote them off the top of my head because yeah. he's, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's just a remarkable person so a lot about you know leadership and coaching um a lot of things that he says he's his kind of one probably in a similar way that you do with john maxwell that you just kind of spend so much time learning from somebody and then you internalize all that stuff and yep. then their words come out of your mouth in a way and <laughs> just in your language that's right and that's what marshall goldsmith has been for me so yeah man so that's yeah awesome. he's had a huge yeah, so today's his birthday. So happy seventy fifth uh, birthday to Marshall Goldsmith. Yeah, man, and he's happy, still going strong. Birthday. He'll be hopefully, maybe he'll be on the podcast too. So he still does podcast experience. He's retired from coaching, but he's. It's interesting how you know your mentorship and things. So he has this hundred coaches program, and that's always been his philosophy. He says everything I do, I give away for free, and all of my you know resources and everything I use, you can find on my website. And you can take it, you can change it, you can do whatever you want with it. And, um, you know, he, um, he has this, uh, hundred coaches program and he is teaching these hundred coaches that he's selected for various reasons, everything he knows. And then the only caveat is then that they have to do the same when they reach 
his phase of life that he's in now. Okay. So this legacy building phase, and that's I think similar to what what you're doing. So yeah, and that's that's, that's know, awesome. You know what you described yeah. with him is you know living the abundance mindset versus you know having mm. the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset, and it's what we were mm. talking about earlier when. When I said I don't see you as competition, it's because that's yep. an abundance mindset. There's plenty for yep. all of us, mm. and even even I mean I talk about that with with, with the blue collar workforce because a lot of them, you know, they get they get all tangled up in worrying about who got promoted and who got a raise. Mm. Everybody can get mm. promoted. Everybody can get a raise. If, if you're learning yep. the stuff that you and I teaching and talking about, anybody can do it. It may not be in the same company they in, but you develop yourself. You're gonna get a raise it, it, like, if you got good character. That's, right. that's you got to yep. have good yep. character. You got to have a competency, but most important is the character because it's going to either launch you or limit you depending on what degree of character you have. But, you know, that's part of my message to the individual worker is you, you decide when you get a raise. It ain't got nothing to do with the boss right. when you get a raise. It's up to you. If you got a bad boss, why yep. you got a bad boss? <laughs> I got to <laughs> ask you something while we're right here. Uh, yep. And I don't know if I'm interrupting your story. You sound like that's you right. ain't finished with your story. No, that's all. Yeah, yeah but that, we can go. We can skip around. Any anything's good. I just you you on a good rhythm though. I don't want to mess it up, but I want to make sure I ask no, you no. this. You gonna, you gonna like this yep. question? And, I remember where I left off. Okay, so you probably you probably got you probably got this on tip of your tongue, but all right. But you on the podcast? You going out to the world? This is you know you can use this to promote yourself and who you are too. But what's 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 your what's your number one tip for somebody who just got promoted? Oh man. Uh, well, this is also borrowed from Marshall Goldsmith, but it's to, to be humble. Oh, that's be humble because that's where your learning is going to come from. And this is also something I, I heard from a friend at one time. He said, yeah, he said, you know, the, the leaders who overestimate themselves and underestimate the difficulty of their job of the new job do the worst. And the ones who underestimate themselves a little bit, and who overestimate the difficulty of the job, they do better on average. And yeah. so then I often close my posts on, on LinkedIn with that message. Stay humble, read some books, find a coach, find a mentor, listen to some podcasts. And that's, I think, you know, that, that humility and that ability to say, hey, I, I'm a beginner, I don't know. It's not something that every leader that gets promoted has because they've succeeded in their prior roles and then they think well i'm good at everything i do <laughs> so how hard can this leadership stuff be right and they kind of <laughs> just see that as a continuation of what they're already doing when in actuality it's a brand new career and it's a brand new job and it's a it's a brand new thing that they might be good at it but they don't know yet <laughs> right yep. so and and the other thing is i say well if you have willingness to learn and you lead by example then I don't even care how good you are. You will get good eventually. <laughs> right. So you need that. That's pretty much it. Willingness to learn, lead by example and some, let's say, accountab accountability. So this like character stuff that you talk about. So the ability to do what you say. And that's pretty much it. And then I always tell people, I don't, I don't care how good you are. Cause people say, ah, oh, you know, that person, they don't look, they don't have, you know, certain social intelligence or communication skills. I say, that's, that's fine. Do they, do they have humility and desire to learn? And do they, you know, have the ability to lead by example? Cause maybe they were a great programmer or whatever they are. And do they have this, the will to lead? So the will to lead to me means that let's say, as I think maybe it's even a Marshall Goldsmith phrase, this enthusiastically embrace their personal growth and leadership development. <laughs> Right. So yeah. then, you know what I'm talking about when you see people like that, that's the ones you're like, oh, that's that's the kind of person I want to work with. Yeah. Right? In, in my country language, my, my simple language, I call that hungry people. That's the people yeah, I'm looking hungry. for. Uh, those who yeah. are hungry for growth. That's that's my people right there. I don't care what level they are. I don't care how yep. maybe bad their character is at the moment. I don't care the yep. history, their story. I don't care nothing about mm. who they are. I think they are. If, if they truly hungry to get better. That, that's that's my perfect client no matter if it's free client or paid client or you know it doesn't matter yep. no matter where they're from what yep. they look like who wants who's hungry that's my that's yep. that's why I, 
latched onto you. You you you're very yep. successful. You've accomplished a lot, but you're hungry. You're hungry for the yep. to climb yep. to the next level and beyond. That's why we connected. You you hump all those things you just said. You're those things. You're yep. humble and you're yep. hungry. And I give you a quote to take with you. And, and let me just say that question I ask you. I don't get credit for that. I ain't that sharp at the moment. That come from Rhea. She, if you saw yeah. me look away earlier, she come in and brought me a sheet of paper and said, said, ask him that question. You know, ask him <laughs> the number one tip for something. But that was a good question. You know, and it'll be a good yep. plug for you. Just that little snippet, yep. that segment. But I want to make sure I give her credit. Mm-hmm. That, that was her question. Mm-hmm. I asked it like it was it's my question. It's a good question. question. But I wanted it to sound <laughs> right when you gave the answer. But now I want to make sure everybody knows she's helping me look better. That's what, that's what, that's what we do for each other, you know. Help, you know, Beautiful. your spouse. Help, help them be better. So that's good I stuff. I, I'll share a quote with you though about humility. It was from, come from uh, Warden Burl Kane. He was a prison warden of uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary uh, prison system. Wow. Prison. It was when he took it over. It was known as the bloodiest prison in America. I mean, it was so bad. It was mm, bad, mm, and it's like. Mm. I can't remember four, six thousand people, five thousand, a lot of people there. But he wow. took over. He he was he had zero experience in the prison system. I think he was a teacher, mm. if I remember right. Mm. He was mm. a he was some in in some kind of in ed, in education. He may have been a teacher. He might have worked his way up to be you know like an executive or something in the, some type of education system. But he they basically recruited him to to go in there. But his quote. We, we met him in San Quentin out at uh, San Quentin out in California at the prison out there. Rhea and I were doing wow. a lot of, we were doing a lot of speaking with prison wardens at that time. They were going mm. through a transformational mm. program and Rhea was a part of that. And I was there for that, but I met Warden Kane in the, uh, actually in the, uh, in the church there in the prison, we were sitting by each other. And he said, he said, you know, I used to always tell everybody you got to be humble or he'd say, be humble. So you don't stumble. And, and that was Beautiful. that. Just I like that line. I ain't never forgot it. Be be humble so you don't stumble. Warden, his name's B U R L. Burl Kane, C A I N E. I believe it is. Mm. He's got a book. Somebody wrote a book about him. Anyway, that's mm. pretty interesting. Let's get back to your story, Matthew. I I got a sidetrack, <laughs> but it was good stuff in there. That's all right. I I like the sidetrack. That's a great quote there. So because you can't forget that one. Those, those are the best quotes. No, that's right? a good one. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and I think this, when you were talking about working with hungry people, so this is another Marshall Goldsmith thing. One of the things that I posted today in honor of his birthday, he says, he asked, uh, um, oh, well, I can't remember his name, but the guy who was, he was the CEO of Boeing, and then he became the CEO of Ford. His name okay. was uh, Alan Mullally. Alan Mullally is his name. And he said, he Marshall realized the client that he spent the most time with improved the least. Mm. And the client that he spent the least time with improved the most. And that was Alan Mulally. So then he always is joking. He says, so then inverse, there's the inverse relationship between success and time spent with Marshall Goldsmith. And then Alan Mulally told him, well, Marshall, if you choose the right clients, you'll always succeed. And if you choose the wrong clients, you'll never succeed as a coach. (laughs) And that's what you're talking about, finding those hungry guys. Yeah, And then the other thing he says that's really beautiful and humble, he says, if I'm the best coach in the world and you don't get better, then who cares? <laughs> and if I'm the worst coach in the world and you do get better, then who cares? It's not about the coach. And this there is so important because people ask me all the time, can you do this? Can you fix this person? And I said, no, <laughs> I can't. But I can tell if they're coachable and I can yeah. try to select the good people. And I can say, hey, I don't think this person's coachable. I don't think I can help them or I can say, Oh yeah, this one for sure. This, this is going to yeah. be a huge success. Cause you can, like you say, you can see who's hungry. You can see, yeah. you know, just with a, with a few, few, even one, two, three hours of your time, you know, you can really help somebody because they're, they're fueling their, their own growth and they just need a little, you know, pointer here or a different perspective here or some suggestions, how, or, yeah. or, you know, something to maybe just have them kind of ask them the right questions that they can unlock their, you know, their goals and get clarity on things that they want and how they might do things. And yeah, so that hunger is pretty much that's the variable that that really separates success, the successful from the not successful. 
Yeah. Yep. And and I can validate that what you said from uh, Marshall Goldsmith about. I mean, I I do mentor the hungry people, but and and I don't have they don't call me a lot because they know I'm gonna dump the truck on them when they call. They got a got they got a lot of stuff to go do, so they they don't call very yeah. often because because they're the That's people right. who are really gonna go I'm, do the. I'm stuff. not ready. To, I'm not ready to call you till I can look you in the eye and say, "Hey, I did all those things I said I was gonna do, Mac." So. <laughs> Yep, and that's that's what we, you know, you and I both know, and the listeners may not know, so I just want to make sure they know. But what I do for people, what you do for people, is we. I tell people there's no short, there ain't no shortcut. You got to do the work, but but you can travel down the path. You got to travel at different speeds. And what folks yes. like me and you and Rhea do is we accelerate your journey. You still got to do the work, yep. but we yep. we we there's no shortcut. But but we can get some obstacles out of your way. Things gonna slow you down, yep. or we can. Yep. Yep. give you some tips or in your case coaching you can ask some questions that's going to provoke thought that somebody's never had and raise their level of awareness to a level that's never been and help them do what we always say keep climbing right yep that's right that's right so, so where were you in your story that that you can pick back up on so yeah so so then i had this this business for um nine years so in croatia because that you know that now the, now it's improved a lot but the economic picture was not always great it was it's not the it's not the wealthy the wealthiest country in europe you might say so then in croatia if it's not about if your company's profitable or how profitable it is but even if you've had a company for nine years you're a success oh, yeah. <laughs> so they oh, always okay. joke about people they say oh i had a company for nine years nine years you stayed you didn't go bankrupt nine years wow so <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, yeah, so basically, this is where, where, I, where I can get in, into the love story. So I, then I met my wife. Um, Let I me ask you this. Sorry. I, I got to interrupt you yeah. before you tell the wife story. You doing okay on yeah. battery? We don't want to lose this wife story. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, no, I'm down to 4%. Thanks for reminding me. That's good. So I'm going to plug yeah. it in, and then we'll just switch to this We don't want to lose normal. the wife story. <laughs> you, you, you can see that you're an experienced uh, podcaster here, so I got to plug in my phone here it's amazing that we can do this on the phones huh it's so awesome things it's have changed since my dial-up internet days it's so awesome okay so so get back to the love story this is a good to get yeah, to the, so I, the good stuff now yeah so I, I i met my wife in bosnia in sarajevo at the sarajevo film festival and this was a uh, one of those kind of destiny things so uh, one uh one of my clients um his name is Tomica Vujic. He's a he was the CEO of a big bank here, and very close personal friend. And very he helped me a lot in my career because he was my coaching client. So I got to coach this really stupendous leader, and then his direct reports and things. So he really um, helped me a lot there, and I helped him I think a little bit too. But he got me then. I asked him, "Hey, do you know anybody?" I was going to visit a friend there in, in Bosnia. I said, "Hey, do you know anybody who can get me a ticket to this?" Um, film festival because he's in Croatia. Everybody knows everybody. So then he called um, a guy from Atlantic group, um, Nevin there at Atlantic group, who was one of the main uh, guys there who, who then put me on a list. And I didn't know I was on this list, but then I went to this film festival and I got, uh, I went there with my friend. I said, let's go see if we're on the list. And then um, I just gave my name and then they, they gave me this VIP pass to go see all the films and go to all the parties. And then I met my wife at one of these, parties there and she she was uh she's from ukraine and she had been traveling the world i think for two or three years and she had been through all through croatia and southeast asia and south america and then i went to this party and saw her there um and she was off in the corner dancing by herself and spinning in circles for like three four hours and i was just you know entranced it was like there was a spotlight shining on her i said man who is this lady who's so filled with joy and happiness and she it's like there was nobody else there you know and she just and i just said oh, i gotta meet this lady and then i tried to stop her she she walked by me and i tried to stop her and she just brushed by me that's how these eastern european girls that's how they do it it's not like america in america you stop stop a girl and talk to her she's gonna talk back to you she might even come to you nowadays and approach you first and ask for your number <laughs> so then i said oh man she just she just breezed by me so then she was going to the bathroom or whatever and she came back and then when she came back then i you know grabbed her a little bit by the shoulders <laughs> and introduced myself and then 
she made the big mistake of giving me her number and we met again and we had a, a date and whatever and then she came back to Croatia with me and then um yeah we decided to start a family <laughs> right away <laughs> So she's kind of, I'm kind of an ultra spontaneous person and she's an ultra spontaneous person. Okay. So then we didn't think a lot about what we were doing. We just went with it. And now we've been together um, almost, let's see, almost 10 years. Wow, and we have three children. That's awesome. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have three children. Prema is uh, almost nine and Shanti is four and Ananda is our newborn son. He's uh, four, uh, four months old. Okay, you and got a so house then, full. Of, you got a house. Yeah, full. I got a house full of them. Yep. And so then she was. We had the child and things, and then you know the business just wasn't going good enough at that time. So then it was like, man, this running your own business is pretty tough. Boy, if I could only get a job, that'd be like getting a vacation compared to, <laughs> you know, trying to make it here in Croatia with this with this company. So then I was very fortunate. I, I applied for a few jobs. I was applying for jobs in um, Berlin because it was one of the favorite cities I had been to. And then I think Czech Republic and Spain. And then this um, computer game developer in Berlin hired me because I had the coaching experience. And then I went there to work um, for four years, actually, in Berlin. So first as a um, talent development manager and then as the head of people and culture and then this was an amazing experience. So the, the, the company is called Jaeger. It was, it's an amazing company, but the computer game industry itself is an amazing place to work because the people are so passionate about their work. <laughs> yeah. So you have like 110% engaged people because they, they love video games and they've been making them, playing them their whole lives. So that was really <laughs> yeah. special working with them. And then when so then this covid thing happened and all that and then uh my friend this one friend it's it's funny i had coached him for also for free i'd never charged him anything because I, I he was i think 23 year old guy who contacted me for english lessons i said man you don't need english lessons you're you're an entrepreneur you don't have time for that <laughs> so he said i've never spoken english this long in my life he's talked to me for 40 minutes it's good enough just go with it. But I said, if you ever need my help, you know, feel free to call me. And then, you know, when he, when he would have a presentation, he'd go to a conference uh, or have to present, or he would, you know, have a, let's say high stakes business meeting or phone call that we would sit and talk, or he was having some management problems or needed to make some decisions. And he would call me as his trusted person. And then that guy, his name's Ivan Kladic, he start, he, so he, he, when I first met him, he had just founded a company and there were three employees. And then he ended up making a really big success out of it and then sold it to a larger company. And then I hadn't talked to him in several years, but he kind of remembered me as this guy who had helped him um, early on in his career. And then he founded a new company and then he called me up in Germany and he said, hey, man, I'm building a new company. We're, we're going to make a social network for sports fans. And he was reading, um, I think he's probably read 50 leadership books and different business books and things. And he, and he said, as he was reading, he was reading the book called the, the what is it called? The, the Trillion Dollar Coach, I think. No, I'm I think not familiar with that. Trillion Dollar Coach. So this is about um, the guy who coached like Steve Jobs and the founder, uh, yeah. uh, founder of Google. And he's, it's a, it's a pretty good book itself. Uh, Bill, I forget his name now, but he's, but it's, it's, I highly recommend this one. So as he was reading that, he said, um, I need a guy like that. Who do I know like that? And then he called me cause he remembered, Oh yeah, I just know that one guy who's into leadership and company culture and things. And so then that's how I ended up coming back to Croatia. So it was kind of unusual because usually people are leaving Croatia to go get jobs in Western Europe. But then I came back from from Berlin to um, uh, Croatia. And so then now that company. So I was working in the original company that he founded half the time and then the new startup that he founded half the time. And so now I'm currently working there in the Superbet group. So it's been absorbed. Those two entities have been absorbed in this larger corporation. And so then I'm you know responsible for the for coaching and 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 training of the new leaders and things in that company. So, so I'm still That's there um, at the moment. Yep. That's good stuff though, man. You got a great story and it. And it really is. It's aligned you very well to this. I mean, you, you, you know that, but 
I'm just affirming it to you. I mean, you, you, yeah. All you got to do is the work, just like yeah, everybody yeah. else all I talk to. The work, like everybody you talk to. That's yeah. That's all you got to right. do is do the work, and you need to do it. Like I told you before, and you are doing it. That's why you, you know, you're on the podcast. That's why you got you, you got you just promoted dot com. You know, yep. going. You got that going. You're getting your podcast going. You ready to go, man? Yeah, yeah, it's it's going well. It's exciting. So, oh yeah. So then, that's the most recent turn of events is that I started posting on LinkedIn every day. So that that started in January as a New Year's resolution, and I yeah. hadn't been posting at all. So literally zero, and I wasn't looking at LinkedIn and I wasn't posting there. Okay. And then I so just, we met I pretty quick idea. after that. We met. Yeah, yeah. Part, part of are, that that's right. is what yep. caused us to meet. Part of your initiative right. to, yep. to be intentional. Yeah. No, so I, I will recommend to anybody listen listening to this, post on LinkedIn every day for 90 days and see what happens yep. because it's just unbelievable. And this actually, so this, there were two, two reasons I started doing this. The one thing was that I felt, let's say, it's like, a, I guess it's an anxiety or like, it's not quite fear. It's like a subtle form of fear. So it doesn't appear to be fear. It's just like, oh, that's not for me. Or, you know, why would I do that? Or I don't have anything to say. And then because I had that resistance, I said, all right, I probably need that because I need to get do something out of my comfort zone. And then may, why not that? So yeah. it wasn't with any kind of idea of any results that would occur other than getting out of my comfort zone. And then the second reason was because I, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm just impacting, you know, two, three, four people per day. But if I create you know, start writing posts, then some, sometimes people like that post or comment or say, hey, yeah. that's really useful. And so then I said, well, maybe I could in, impact more people or maybe I could have more of an influence or increase my impact as you talk about, right? Be a more influential or high impact person or like you said, to help more people by getting yeah. this message out or getting something out. And so that started January 6th. So it hasn't been 90 days yet, getting close. Okay. But um, Look what yeah, that just... Oh man, you just can't believe it. So every day I'm meeting amazing people. So just like yeah, how we just met, got, every day I yeah, meet three, four, collecting. five. Yeah, I'm just collecting them. I I got a, I got a hundred or two hundred people that would be amazing podcast guests and collaborators and who are aligned with the just got promoted dot com mission and you know it just it's just unbelievable what has happened and and really good and inspiring people so that's that's the part you know I'm, i i told someone today I, i'm a i'm a sponge and if i'm surrounded by negative people who are complaining and lazy and not doing anything then that's going to affect me negatively i'm going to suck that up but if i'm seeing all these people who are you know making things happen like you say make it happen then yeah. that really influences me you know there's a there's this you know, thousands of people there every day that are encouraging each other and pushing each other to whatever goals they're pursuing to, 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 you know, to do that and make it happen. That's, yeah. To, to make it happen. And I'll just share with the audience. Uh, I've got a podcast about why you should get on LinkedIn. And I think it's around episode 97, maybe 97, but I can't remember, but it's on the podcast. <clears throat> so if you're, no matter what level you're at out there, but especially if you're not using LinkedIn, check out the the Blue Collar Leadership podcast. Go to an episode somewhere around 97, and and you'll you'll get a little lesson on that. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, that's that's pretty awesome, man. And I can tell you, you know, we we basically built our build, business and our brand on LinkedIn. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really where we did it all to begin with. I mean. For so long, every single thing we did could be tra traced back to a relationship that started on LinkedIn. But, you know, today it's a little different. We we kind of out there a lot more, but we literally we got going on LinkedIn. I mean, just like you mm -hmm. said, we were meeting people, talking to people. I mean, even still today, if, if I get some free time, I, I can go get busy on LinkedIn. I, if I yep. want to, I can go out there and I can start talking to people and finding people to help. It's just real yep. easy. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of how we connected at some point. That's right. I was yeah. like, well, that, that's somebody I think I can help. I sensed that you were a little hungry. I didn't have any idea how. But, man, I'm so glad that, that I played a, a, a small piece, a small role yeah. in, in acting language. I, I played a small role in your big picture. So yeah. that's cool to have motivated you in there. And I'm sure we'll know each other the rest of our lives. That, that's kind of relationship yeah. it is. And, yeah. and who we are is who we attract. And that's 
that's what we we're going to do and trying to help other people do that. So is there anything you haven't said you want to say or anything well, like I'm, that? I'm, gl I'm glad you set you set me up there because I, I made I made a note for what I wanted to close with. And it's the topic of mentorship. OK. And so you've actually it appears to you that you've played a small role. But it, the way from my perspective, it is that you've played a, a huge role and it's actually been. So all of us have, let's say we have some pieces in place and we have some missing pieces and that mentorship piece. So someone who who we can look at and say, I want to be like that guy the yeah. thing that he does. Right. So the so the coach is the person who's a professional coach and helps you get through your obstacles but the mentor is the one that you can look at and say well whatever he's radiating what he's doing you know I want to be like that and I think a lot of people do have mentors and if you don't have one then you know you need to hopefully find one but I think in this case it's not that easy to find the right one but if if somebody does resonate with you right so you you wrote to me but then when when you resonated with me then I wrote to you I said hey <laughs> You know, you've been a blessing to me just from watching that YouTube video. And I think, you know, that's that missing piece of the mentorship is a real blessing. And it's a it's a kind of, you know, not exactly as powerful as me and my wife, but it's a similar, um, you know, fortuitous encounter. Like you said, like attracts alike. So some kind of energy is out there like a magnetism pulling people together and separating them and then you know they come at the right time for the right reason and then most people you know who are our age have had those kind of experiences and know what we're talking about that you know somehow you attract something and it, it's what you need at that time and so yeah. even though we haven't known each other that long i agree with you that we're going to know each other for a long time and we're going to yeah. be working together and we're going to be you know watching each other make it happen and it's uh yeah really amazing experience to be on your podcast now these just these several weeks after we've met and it really this is my first podcast experience so to tell my okay. exclusive story here on the blue collar leadership podcast and I, i'm not a blue collar guy but i am from pittsburgh so i'm from a blue collar city at least and we got a <laughs> blue, blue collar football team and so we're blue collar football fans so that's my blue collar connection and yeah. I love some tough love. So if, and I, I don't need any anything fancy, anything uh, these intellectuals and the professors and the PhDs. I don't need any of that. I need the tough love. Like I, when I when I hear you close uh, one of your podcasts and you say, or one of your videos, you say, "Make it happen." My, some uh, what is it? Some, or somebody else will. Might as well be you. Yeah. And I just tell myself that every day. You know, make it happen. Or somebody else will. Might as well be you. And so, yeah, man. You know, now the phone, the phone is rung. The calling came. You got to step up and make it happen, or somebody else will. So, might yeah, as well be me. They, they, it might as well be you. I mean, it ought to be you. <laughs> I hope it is you. But let me, yeah. you know, you like the, you, I know you like the inverse of things. So think about it from the other perspective. Because I've been gonna write this to you on some post, but I just had never it hadn't ever been the right timing to do it yet, but because I won't make sure you understood it, but you're going to understand it as soon as I say it. I don't know if you'd understood yeah. it the same way when I write it, but anyway, yeah. so, you know, I say, make it happen, you know, make it happen because no, nobody else will. I'm talking about just, just promoted.com. But if, if you put that out there, somebody going to make that happen. <laughs> it's too good. Yeah. But what you got to think in your mind is those people that you want to help. If you don't make it happen, no, nobody else will. That means I got to do it. Like right? that's what you were talking about, right? You gotta, you gotta feel that pressure. And I just share with people, yeah. You know, you say you're not a blue collar guy, but just like I tell people, it doesn't matter. White collar, blue collar is listening to us talk. They understand all this stuff applies to them. Principles apply to everybody. Right. So, Human you know, beings, I got yeah. my, yep, my lane. I want to specifically speak to as many blue collar people as I can, cause that's where I come from. And there's not that much support in the, in that space. Yeah. But we do speak to white collar folks and, and you, you don't care. You just want somebody who's just been promoted. I want you to share some, I want you to share a couple of things. I know we've been going for a little bit. Do you have time for a couple more questions? I do. Yep. So I know you, Every, I know the kids you know. are asleep now, so I'm free. <laughs> You're good to go. 
So a couple of things. Uh, I'll ask them both, and you can ask them whenever order you want to. But I'd like you just just share with our listeners who may not know the difference between you know training, coaching, and mentoring. I, I know, but I want to hear your reference, and it's about you. I want you to tell them in case somebody's listening yeah. and don't know the difference. And then the yeah. other thing is, I know you know about the Peter Principle. So, mm-hmm. so because you touched on it before, but you didn't use that term. But I, I just want you mm-hmm. to talk a little bit about, you know, getting promoted, and then you got to do the work to get the to, to. You know what the Peter Principle is. So talk about those yeah. two things, however you'd like to. So training is is a useful thing, but it's basically educating or showing people skills right more talking about them or i guess if you're working in a factory and things then you'll actually learn how machines work and things but it's usually something that has a beginning or an end so it's kind of um it's lacking um continuity and follow-up so if you're doing the exact things you learn in the training that's great but oftentimes especially when it comes to leadership people will have some training at the beginning or you know if they're lucky and then that'll be the end of it. They'll be just expected to go. Right. So, so coaching is something that's more um, often it's more sustained and it's about really what people are doing. So that's the way I understand. So I know there's different definitions in the international coaching federation and things have their own, but the way that I'm looking at it is similar to what, you know, how Marshall Goldsmith is doing it. So really focusing up on what people are doing and trying to get feedback from the environment about what they could do differently or better to lead their people. And this is a little bit different than the ICF coaching, but I spent a lot of time, you know, making sure that people, let's say, get a 360 or feedback from their people and that we try to figure out really what's their leadership bottleneck as yep. as assessed and determined by their by their direct reports. And then, okay. yeah, so that's one of the main ways in which I work. So do, I do a lot of different kinds of coaching, but that's, let's say, the most impactful is really trying to help somebody get around an obstacle or, you know, it could be a skill gap. So then we learn some skills and things around that. But ultimately, it's something that's individualized. And it's and I'm kind of bringing this, let's say, view of sports coaching. So it's taking a yeah. high-performance person and trying to figure out how to enhance their performance and Similarly, when a when a when a coach, a sports coach is working with an athlete, it's going to be a very different approach for different athletes, right? Depending on what they need. And then mentorship is really that idea that you know somebody's in the same field. So then a person who's a CEO, maybe they have a mentor who's another CEO. Yeah. Right. Or a person who's a lawyer, they they might have a mentor that's a lawyer. Right? Yep. So then there's often that similarity that somebody's operating in the same field or, you know, a young football player is being mentored by an older football player or yep. even a retired football player. Yeah. Right. So that there's some kind of um, there's that role model in there. So, I mean, some people who are not coaches might see me as a role model in some ways, but it's different when a when a when a programmer um, is working with me, then they don't want to be a coach, most likely. Yep. So then they need a programmer who became a people centered leader or an effective leader of people. That would be an example of a mentor for them. Okay. And ideally when people have, I mean, it's a blessing when it occurs, but it does happen that people have their direct manager be a sort of mentor. And I think you, you mentioned you had a situation like that, but not that often, yeah. right? Yeah, only Where once. you were able to actually only once. All right. In yeah. 20 years. So. Only once in 20 years, but that's a beautiful thing when that happens. And I think it's probably in some of the, you know, I don't know, Microsoft or IBM or GE, some of these companies that are known for having good um, leadership development and high standards for leadership. I think there are companies where you're more likely to have, you know, competent and decent uh, uh, leaders in the ranks. Yeah. So I think it is out there in some, in some places. But so, yeah. That's the mentorship bit. Yep. So but that, basically, I, I think one 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 of the main things that Marshall Goldsmith is known for is this um, leadership as a contact sport, a study that they did with follow up, so yep. that people, if if they're getting like a, if you get a three sixty or if you have some training or something, and there's no follow up, then there's a lot less. It's a lot less likely that you'll improve. 
And so then that key variable. So if we send out every two or three months a survey, like did Mac get better at X, Y, and Z? Yep. Right. Then the likelihood that you're going to get better is going to be much higher. Or if you and I have a call once a month, they say, so what did you get done? Or, you know, and then I'm, I have that accountability. Um, and this is kind of the key ingredient that, that coaching can provide that, that training is often lacking. So. Okay. So that's good stuff. So yeah. now let's think about the person who just got promoted. What's the Peter principle? What do they need to know about the Peter principle? If they just got, well, promoted? what do they say that you get promoted to your highest level of, uh, Incompetence. incompetence yeah yeah so when you're not able to perform or you're not at, able to get better to get at to that the level. next level yep. yeah at that level but the, the problem is that when people are not able to perform at that level they still stay in those roles so there's not a lot of returning people back to the individual contributor le level <laughs> yeah part so of the problem is that mm -hmm. i was just gonna say that's what's awesome about what you want to do you know with just just got promoted.com is yeah part of your mission is I, you didn't say this but i'm saying it but it's it's true mm -hmm. relative to this conversation at the moment you're trying to make sure that people don't fall victim to the peter principle that's that's, that's right. really your mission but that's most people don't point. know yep. what the peter principle is but that's yeah. yeah if they do that's what you your your goal is there yeah i i read a study it said i think it was 30 percent or 40 percent of I mean, it's thirty percent of people, uh, newly promoted leaders, will fail or 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 lose their job within the first, I think, year and a half. It was something like that. Yeah. And so then, coaching can really make a difference for those folks because I think a huge part of the problem that I find is that people don't know what they don't know. <laughs> so, but I, I do the training part. So I do the kind of onboarding for leaders and do the training part and the, teaching the skills. But then that follow up is so important, and I think yep. that's you know, the vision for just got promoted.com is that it's, it's an ongoing thing. It's a, like a support group and a club that as long as you want to be in it, you'll be in it. So the idea is, you know, not because everyone can take a leadership course. You can go to Udemy or LinkedIn learning and take courses. But then the idea of having this group of leaders um, and access to, you know, people like you, people like me um, that are there to help you with continuity is really a valuable thing. And I think that follow up and continuity and, and making, like you said, making leadership development and personal development, personal growth, a lifestyle that yep. you embrace from now until your last breath. Yeah. And so then being around other people who are into that is a really um, valuable thing. And that's what we're trying to create. So the community. So it's not just that you, know, you learn and, and leave, but have this community of leaders growing together. Good stuff. You got anything else, yep. man? It's been it's been an awesome episode. That's I it. think you're gonna you, yeah. you dump the truck on us today. It's good stuff you've been dropping. Yeah. So I just want to say thanks to you, Mac. And it's been a real joy getting to know you. And I'm looking forward to continuing our stories together and having you on my podcast next. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome, man. I consider it yeah. a privilege. So yeah. So if you ain't got nothing else, we're going to wrap it up. You good with that? Yeah. Just, I want to just say, I'll close and say, tell everyone, keep climbing. <laughs> and I'm going to tell them, make it happen or somebody else will. And it might as well be you. <laughs> All right. Well, well thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Sorry that's, if I said, I took your line, but. <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. That's good stuff. So, so I appreciate you staying up late in, in Croatia to record this with us and, I hope, you know, the, the Blue Collar Leadership YouTube channel is new, so ain't got a lot of subscribers at, at the moment. But over time, I think this series is going to be awesome. And I think I think people, you know, I we don't promote stuff. Not We just we look for grassroots organic growth. That's a, that's the way we grow our business. So if enough people like it, it's going to it's going to get out over time. So hopefully you'll be seeing people watch your you know, you'll be having people reach out to you, hopefully for years as this thing becomes popular. Yeah, I hope so. It's pretty exciting. Podcast number one, and hopefully it will be many, many podcasts. All right. All yeah. right, folks. Well, thanks for listening. Be sure to reach out to Matthew. Just got promoted dot com. You're gonna you're gonna see that grow. Whatever it is today, it's gonna be something out else next month, something else, you know, next year. So because we're gonna put the pressure on Matthew, he ain't letting off the gas. He's gonna build some kind of big brand out of this thing. So that's right. You guys not dive into it. Stay on you better believe it. it. Yeah. All right. right. Yeah. Right now. So right now it's a, it's a newsletter. 
and the podcast is in the works. So that'll be next, starting with my dad. And then where it's going to go from there, we'll announce uh, one step at a time. All right. All right. Thank you, Matthew. And everybody you, who's Matt. listening. Yep. All right. Thank, thank you, you, Rhea. Yeah, Rhea's in the background making it all happen, right? Yep. She does a good job. M- most of the stuff I do, if it wasn't for her supporting me and helping me, it wouldn't get done. <laughs> I wouldn't I be doing it at all, a lot of these things. <laughs> yep, all right, yep. folks. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Talk to you next time. All right. Thanks a lot.